welcome back to Watch Addiction, Watch Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Richard Legrand Odyssey Mark II, a diving watch. And this is the outer box it came in, as you can see. Nice cardboard. Now here's the actual box it comes in, which I believe is, I'm not sure if it's leather or faux leather, but it's a pretty nice uh, substantial box here with the logo here. And I already unpackaged the watch. Okay, so inside this box you get your watch, you get an extra rubber strap, you get two extra spring bars, which are actually in the other box right now, and a spring bar removal tool. Now here is the actual watch, and as you can see, it's a very beautiful watch here, uh, very nice. And uh, here's the rubber strap that it comes with if you want to switch it out, which is actually pretty good. It's not too bad here. And uh, there's the box. So let's get into the review, guys. All right, starting off with some basic specifications on the Richard Legrand Odyssey Mark II. We have a relatively decent sized 41 millimeter case, which is pretty good. Nice short lugs here, so it doesn't wear too big. In terms of actual thickness of the piece, we are looking at 13 millimeters thick. We get a coin edged 90 click uh, unidirectional rotating bezel. We get 200 meters of water resistance on this diver. So it makes definitely a true diving watch. You can definitely take it diving with uh, a 200 meter rating. Uh, the crown is screwed down over here at the three o'clock position. No crown guards on this brushed uh, 316L stainless steel case all around. And the finishing is quite good. We have chamfered polished edges here, as you can see on top of the lugs. Uh, which looks pretty good. The brushing looks pretty good, I must say. And the coin edge is quite good on the bezel also for a secure grip there. Between the lugs, we're looking at 20 millimeters. Now, a cool thing about this watch is some of the elements used in producing this watch. It's a $300 dive watch or $299. And actually, this bezel insert here is made of sapphire, which is quite cool. I have not seen that before, and I found that quite interesting that they use that, especially at this low price point of $299 for an automatic 200 meter dive watch. Now also, the sunburst black ceramic dial. So we actually have a ceramic dial, which has a beautiful sunburst effect, as you can see. Even under indoor lighting, you can see a bit of a sunburst here. And especially when out in the light, if you check some of my photos on Instagram at Watch Attic Channel, you can get a better glimpse of that. So we have your typical kind of blanc pond, uh, 50 fathom st or bathscape style bezel here. As you can see, uh, marked over here with a pip, which is loomed. The bezel insert, which is sapphire, is also loomed with BGW9, which glows blue, as well as all of these markers and numerals 12, 3, 6, and 9. Now the print work is done on the dial with Richard Legrand and the RL over here below 12, and the Odyssey over here above the six o'clock position where it's labeled 200 meters as well. Now this watch does come on this quite nice bracelet, I would say. I was quite surprised by the bracelet. Solid stainless steel brushed all around. It is using the pin system here. But as you can see, we even get a nice, which is I found interesting, they actually signed it going this way instead of that way. So it's signed there, Richard Legrand right here. Two buttons to open that up and we get a nice polished milled clasp which is a nice touch. Uh, usually they're always brushed, but this is actually polished and it's pretty secure. Uh, I wouldn't have to worry about that. Kind of feels like one of those Hamilton clasps. Uh, for example, on my Hamilton khaki, Field Automatic has a clasp like this. Four micro adjustments for fit there, no problems. It's definitely secure. It's not gonna come off your wrist. And also let's check the fluidity of the actual bracelet. Uh, it's pretty good, I must say, for this price point. Um, you know, it's not a hair puller or anything of that nature, so I found that quite nice. Now this bracelet is certainly large enough to fit uh, or accommodate larger wrists. I know I get a lot of comments in my feedback section. A lot of people are like, oh, that bracelet's too small. That There's no way it's going to fit my wrist. Well, as you can see, here it is. And this thing is has a lot of extra lengths, as you can see. So even if you have like a 9-inch wrist, I think this uh, bracelet should fit you just fine, which is good to see. You know, some brands produce bracelets that are quite small, only have like two on each side to remove, but there's definitely enough room on this bracelet for any wrist size, which is good to see. And it does have a nice solid feeling, uh, considering we do get solid end links as well. Now, if you're wondering what is actually powering this watch, it's the Seiko NH35 uh, automatic movement, about a 38, 40 hour power reserve, it's hand winding, hackable. Uh, we all know this movement, it's commonly seen in micro brands, 
Um, it's an easy way to get into the game, and it's a good movement as well. Now the crown is signed a RL for Richard the Grand. Of course, it's screwed down. Let me go ahead and unscrew it. There we go. Uh, Self-winding is the first position, of course. The watch is already going. And then we have a rogue date over here. And then your hacking position, which we can uh, set the time. We get those hands out of the way of the logo. And uh, no problems on the no problems on the crown here. Now the dial is quite symmetrical, considering we have that no date, which I do like, kind of like a no date Submariner. It's very symmetrical. It looks clean. Uh, cleaner. If they put a date window on this watch, I'm not sure I would like it. I do like the clean no date. Very simple. Richard the Grand Odyssey. Everything is kind of in place here. Now we do get a nice long uh, sweeping seconds hand, as you can see, which does reach the markers almost to the end, actually, uh, which is pretty cool. I do like that when companies do that. It makes it easier to tell the time, you know, especially when they reach all the way out here. You can exactly see where it's passing at any given moment. Now, the bezel. You might be wondering the bezel action. It's a 90-click unidirectional rotating bezel. As I stated earlier, we have a nice coin-edged grip here. Really easy to grip from any angle. Um, minimal play, I would say. Not really that much. Very minimal, very minimal play there. And everything lines up to the 12 o'clock position there. Now, uh, the loom on the actual dial is BGW9, which glows blue as well. And I will get you a loom shot towards the end of the video, so you will have to wait or you can just skip ahead. <laughs> but um, the loom is pretty good, I must say. It looks pretty nice with the blue loom on the bezel and the dial. All these Arabics light up as well as these markers, which is nice to see. And the case back. Well, the case back is pretty cool. Uh, let me try to get in there for you guys. As you can see, we have that old school diving helmet with some anchors going through it, it looks like. Uh, it is screwed down and brushed, of course. And what I did realize, that these notches to unscrew the case back are quite large, so you should have no problem getting a tool in there to unscrew it if you wanted to. Um, not sure you really would need to. But as you can see, it stayed stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel, Odyssey 200 automatic. Now in terms of the actual crystal here, we have a double domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside uh, for legibility. It's, we definitely would need that on this watch considering we have that ceramic uh, dial and that sapphire bezel which kind of gives off some nice little reflections there as you can see. So that definitely helps a lot. Uh, let me just get you an all around good look at the watch before I show you the rubber strap and throw it on my wrist, get you a loom shot, and we'll finish it up here, guys. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this on my wrist, show you guys the rubber strap, get a loom shot in, and let's get into it. All right, so here's that BGW9 loom, which glows blue. As you can see, like I stated earlier, the bezel is loomed, all the hands are loomed, the numerals are loomed, 12, 3, 6, and 9. The tip of the sweeping seconds hand is loomed as well. And it's a pretty good loom, you know, it's definitely bright, legible at night. And it does last for quite some time. Uh, BGW9 loom is always good to see on a watch at this price point. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Now here is the Richard the Grand Odyssey Mark II on my 6.5 inch wrist with this 41 millimeter case. But as you can see, those lugs are quite short, so it does wear like a 40 millimeter watch, in my opinion. It fits about end to end, rides quite flat on the wrist. Um, the case back is not, doesn't come out so much, so it does sit nice on the wrist, which I do like. And that's always good to see. And it's definitely pretty classy. I like the look of it. I think it looks good. Uh, definitely looks a little more expensive than it does. And that's because those nice materials, the sapphire bezel and the ceramic sunburst black dial. Now, if you're not a bracelet guy and you wish to switch out to a rubber strap or a silicone strap, as this is, uh, it does come supplied with two extra spring bars and this silicone strap here with black contrast stitching going around. As you can see, we even get a signed buckle as well, which is cool. It's definitely flexible and definitely quite comfortable as well. So I thought that was nice that they threw that in there uh, just for an extra little add-on. I think most people will actually use the bracelet. The bracelet is quite good. 
but um, you do have the option there. So, my final conclusion on the Richard Legrand Odyssey Mark II. Honestly, for $299 shipped, I believe you're getting a lot for your money. You get a great trusty Seiko NH35 automatic movement. You get a sapphire bezel insert. You get a ceramic dial. These are more expensive components, normally seen in watches that cost upwards of $1,000 or more. And I don't see many micro brands using those components in their watches and even charging more money. Uh, the bracelet is definitely usable and good, which is nice to see at this price point. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of bracelets over the past couple of years. This is definitely one of the better ones. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance, a nice symmetrical dial there. All in all, for $299, I don't think you can beat it. Even comes in a nice size box. Um, if you're into those things, I'm not really too keen on boxes. I happen to, uh, or I usually throw mine away, or uh, eventually they get thrown away. Unless it's a luxury watch box, of course. But um, yeah, I think the Richard Legrand definitely holds its weight for $299. If you're interested in picking one of these up, definitely check out the link in the description below. Also, read the full written article on WatchAddictChannel.com, linked below. And I hope you uh, enjoyed the article, and definitely check out a lot of my other articles as well while you're there. Um, that's pretty much going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely subscribe, like, share with your friends. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.